Welcome to Big Pool Discipleship 101, Week 2. Read Genesis 25 through 42 and discuss the following questions. Let's finish our outline of Genesis from last time using the headings from Genesis 25, 12, 25, 19, 36, 1, and 37, 2. What's so important about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel? What legacy will we leave our children? In Genesis 25, is there favoritism towards either Jacob or Esau? Should we treat children the same, or do circumstances force differences? Is treating a special need the same as showing favoritism? What's a birthright? How did Jacob obtain the family birthright? In Genesis 26, did Isaac lie? Did God bless Isaac? What can we learn from Esau marrying Hittites? In Genesis 27, did Jacob's conduct deserve his family blessings? Why did God still give Jacob the blessing? What does Jacob mean? In Genesis 28, how did Bethel get its name? What was Jacob's dream? What was its purpose? What was the stone? In Genesis 29, what happened with Laban? Why did Jacob agree to it? How was Jacob deceived? What does this teach us about favoritism? What does Jacob marrying Leah and Rachel teach us about polygamy? In Genesis 30, why was childbearing so important? Did Rachel's solution work? Why did God keep blessing Jacob? In Genesis 31, how did Jacob's family troubles continue? In Genesis 32, what does Jacob's wrestling with God teach us? How important is not quitting with God in our lives? Could that be a reason why an imperfect patriarch is blessed by God? In Genesis 33, what does Jacob's meeting with his estranged brother Esau teach us? In Genesis 34, what do Dinah's rape and Simeon and Levi's subsequent revenge murders teach us? What examples of revenge can exist today? Why does God say that vengeance is His and not ours? In Genesis 35, why did God keep blessing this troubled family? In Genesis 36, who are Esau's descendants today? How long can animosity in families last? In Genesis 37, why was Joseph hated by his brothers? What mistakes do parents make to exacerbate sibling rivalry? In Genesis 38, what did Judah and Tamar's affair cause? In Genesis 39, what can Joseph's suffering under false accusation teach us? How was his reaction exemplary for us? In Genesis 40 and 41, what does the story of the cupbearer, baker, and Pharaoh's dreams teach us? Who did Joseph rely on as the interpreter of dreams? In Genesis 42, what does the story of Joseph's brothers in Egypt teach us? How would it have been for Joseph to recognize his brothers after so many years? Well, that's it for this week. Continue your reading, and God bless you.